What's going on boys and girls? What's up world? Austin John plays here and today we're going to be talking about the differences between the original Link's Awakening, the new one, and some fun things that you can expect to explore on Koholan Island. <laughs> For those of you who played the original Link's Awakening on the Game Boy or the DX version on the Game Boy Color, you may be wondering what's the difference between the original and this brand new version on the Nintendo Switch. And for those of you who are going to be having your first experience on Koholan Island, there are some great things that you're going to be playing through and experiencing for the first time on this brand new adventure. This is the second year in a row that Nintendo has given us a brand new coat of paint on an original Game Boy Classic. Last year in 2000. 18, we got Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee that were a complete reimagining and just a beautiful way to experience the first generation of Pokemon, red, blue, green, and yellow. Well, it's 2019 and we're going to be doing that again. Originally released on the Game Boy, then re-released on the Game Boy Color, and now re-released on the Nintendo Switch. And I've combed through every single little bit of footage and tweets and posts by Nintendo and E3 presentations for all of this information here, and I think it's going to be pretty advanced. The original Link's Awakening had the most basic of pixel art sprites and a screen-by-screen -screen experience similar to Zelda on the NES. When comparing Link's Awakening to NES Zelda, Link's Awakening has a much more flushed out story and a beautiful world filled with different areas that intertwine with one another in a way that doesn't make them seem so cut off from one another. One of the most distinguishing parts of Link's Awakening is the original characters, including characters from other Nintendo games such as Chain Chomp, Shy Guys, Kirby's, and even Stomp stomping on Goombas. The remake remains true to the original in quite a lot of ways, but all the changes can be brought down to two basic ideas, the updated art style and quality of life improvements. You're no longer going to be going square by square of areas to explore in the overworld, instead it's going to be one large flushed out map. You'll see every character from that original pixelated design into an adorable diorama style full 3D model. And while you adventure, the entire screen presents a vignette of a depth of field, meaning if it's far away it's going to appear blurry, which can be mostly seen at the top and the bottom of the screens. One huge quality of life feature from the original, and this may sound a little foreign to people who have not played the older Zelda games, is that many items that require you to pause the game and swap is no more. You want to lift a rock? With the proper upgrade, you just hit A in front of a rock and you pick up the rock. You want to block an attack? Your sword and shield are always going to be equipped. You want to charge an enemy? With the proper upgrade, you just hold down L and you can run at it. Perfect. Now that the button count has gone from 2 to 8, it's no longer a trivial, often occurring task. The sword and shield, power bracelet, and pegasus boots are always equipped. A is your action button, B is your sword, R is to block, L is to run. The Y and X buttons are going to be for your other items, such as your magic power, rook's feather, bombs, shovel, ocarina, hookshot, bow and arrow, magic rod, boomerang, and fairy bottles. This remake adds a few items into the game from the original. One of the most notable is going to be bottles. There are several fairy fountains in the game, as well as specific enemies who drop fairies. And in the original, it was just, they refill your hearts. But now you can bottle them and use them for later. As of now, I've seen footage or mention of at least two bottles in the game. As opposed to the original map on the Game Boy, we now get a beautiful, hand-drawn, super detailed map that you can place down markers just like in Breath of the Wild. Very useful if you're exploring a dungeon and you see a wall that looks bombable, but you don't have bombs yet. You can just put down a marker and you'll be back. No problem. The original had a couple of warp points, but with no interface. And it seems like now you're not only going to be able to choose which warp point you want to go to when you play the ocarina and the corresponding song to warp to, but there's also going to be more warp points added. And now there's a memories mode, which lets you see who you've spoken to and what they've told you, as well as help making your progress, most likely with hearts and secret seashells down by the seashore. In the original game, you only had 14 hearts, which was much less than other Zelda games, but on the Switch, that's been increased to 20. In the original, there were 12 pieces of heart and not very well hidden. Could that mean that we have more to search out for? An additional six hearts could mean 24 more pieces of heart to find. There's also a few additions in the game, such as small pedestals in the house of Mabe Village to place statues of various enemies in the game. Exactly what functionality these have or where to get them, we don't know quite yet. If you played the original Game Boy game but not the DX remake for the Game Boy Color, there was a new dungeon 
added called the Color Dungeon. This is going to be making a return as well. In addition to the DX's Color Dungeon, we also get a brand new feature for you and your friends with Dompe's Dungeon Editor, located in Tall Tall Heights. There you can find Dompe Shack, which replaces what was the camera HUD in the DX version, so sorry Mr. Rat Friend. There you could create your own dungeons in Link's Awakening Switch and see how fast you could beat them. While it's definitely not as detailed as Mario Maker, I like to think of it as being more of a big puzzle that you put in all the pieces yourself and you, you completed yourself. There's several ways to unlock new chambers for the dungeon editor, completing dungeons in the main adventure, beating Dompe's challenges, and finding them in the overworld. Each individual chamber tile has a predefined puzzle, a set of enemies, and treasure. But what the treasure is depends on how many treasure chests you have in the dungeon, as well as locked doors. And the fun really comes down to how you connect all these individual tiles. Each custom dungeon challenge requires an entrance, a boss room known as a nightmare lair, and every doorway leading to another doorway in an adjacent room. It's up to you, as the creator, to decide how much back and forth key collecting or hitting the switch for the different floor colors to erect and go down that you'd like the player to be exploring with and being upset by. You also get to choose stairways for underground 2D side-scrolling areas that travel to a different part of the dungeon. How these stairways connect and which 2D area you're going to explore is determined by the game, not you. As to what shape you can arrange these dungeon pieces is based on the dungeon's blank spaces. So far we've seen what appear to be three tutorial stages or challenges to give you the basics of the editor, then a large heart-shaped map. It appears in the first two, you can just place them anywhere and you don't have to fill the map, but in the third, every spot needs to be filled. These are probably defined by Dompe when doing the challenge. And it looks like Dompe's challenges are split into easy, medium, and hard maps by the shovel icons at the top. The chambers are organized by entrance rooms, nightmare layers, and how many entrances slash exits there are to a room, and then organized by which direction the entrances are placed. When completing a map, you can save it to an amiibo and bring it to another Switch console for a player to challenge. However, there has been no mention or documentation anywhere that there is online functionality or a leaderboard for these challenges. I think it's kind of a shame that there is no way to have that online functionality of I make a dungeon and then anyone on my friends list can see it or I have a code similar to how Mario Maker 2 works. There's also going to be a new Link Amiibo that will launch with the game and when used in-game it will unlock what's known as a plus effect which is a dungeon element that's layered on top of a challenge of the dungeon itself. And the little glossy Link boy unlocks Shadow Link. Shadow Link will be a constant presence until the dungeon is cleared or he's defeated, increasing the challenge of the dungeon. The increased challenge comes with increased rewards such as rupees and additional chambers. It looks like the other plus effects include bombs, rupees, hearts, wall masters, and something about enemy splitting. Nintendo stated that the other Zelda amiibos previously released will have some functionality in game, although has not been mentioned what. The previous Zelda amiibos are going to be supported by the game include Wolf Link, the Wind Waker HD amiibos, Breath of the Wild amiibos, Champions Ballad amiibos, 25th Anniversary amiibos, and the Smash amiibos. It seems like the dungeon editor is going to be a big part of the post game. And the one thing I wonder is, can you just cheese it and put more simple dungeon squares to complete the challenge? And we'll just have to wait to see. These are just a few things to look forward to for Link's Awakening on the Switch, releasing September 20th, 2019. And we're doing a giveaway for a copy of the game and a Switch Lite. To enter, all you need to do is 1. Be subscribed to the channel, 2. Hit the like button, 3. Leave a comment down below with the word LINK. Now you can totally just write the word LINK, or you can put it into a fun little sentence. Like this one here, and this one here, and this one here. Great. Alright guys, I'm going to be wrapping up this video. We're covering Link's Awakening here for the Nintendo Switch. Be sure to leave a like down below. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications. Until next time, Austin John out.